Making a beat is done in quite a few steps. You come up with the melody, the drums, the bass. One of the last steps is mixing the beat. And yeah, that's where a lot goes wrong. Then fix it. Today I'll show you five mistakes you're probably making and how to fix it. Mistake number one, over compressing your sounds. First, what is compression? It basically narrows the difference between the loudest and the quietest part of a sound. It brings them closer together. It makes the level of the beat more consistent over the entire track. Now, when you over compress your sound, you're destroying the dynamic because you make everything completely flat. Nowadays, compressing sounds from drum kits, for example, is completely useless. Actually, most drum kits are just drag and drop ready to use. They are already compressed and by compressing them again, you will ruin them. Now, if you want, you can use compression on these drums, but we're gonna do it on a drum bus. Select all the tracks of your drums by holding control and dragging them. Then on the drum bus, right click on the bottom menu and choose send to this track only. Now, add the fruity compressor to this track and create a very aggressive compression. You know, basically overdoing the compression. After that, close it up and turn down the mix knob of the effect. We're gonna use this control to glue the drums together. This is called parallel compression, by the way. Mistake number two, stop using reverb incorrectly. I know, it sounds really nice, but you can completely destroy the dynamics of your mix. That is because your mix have peaks and lows, but when you add reverb to it, it will fill up the gaps and differences in between these peaks, which will again make it sound flat. But don't worry, there's a way to use reverb without killing the mix. Simply sidechain the reverb with your drums. To do that, use a drum bus for this like we did before. Select the mixer track and open up 3D P controller. Then go to the melody track and open up 3D Reverb. Once you have them both open, increase the wet slider to 100%. Now right click it and choose Link to Controller. Then set it to Peak Control Peak since that's what we're gonna use. Then set the mapping formula to invert it. And once you got that, click on Accept. Now you can just use the bass controller to adjust the amount of side chaining that happens when the drums play. You can actually see the wet slider duck when this is happening. Guys, I said it before, but this trick is underrated. And that brings us to mistake number three not doing or overdoing panning. By not panning your elements, you'll leave all the sounds in the center of the mix, and that makes it feel flat and lifeless. So by spreading it out, you will make more room for the elements to breathe. You can kind of see it like putting 50 people inside one small car. You need to squash them together. By using panning, you'll turn your mix into a huge bus where these 50 people will have a comfortable spot. Now, on the other hand, overdoing the panning can also destroy the mix. Maybe it sounds great on stereo, but once you turn it to mono, it will be day and night difference. Mono compatibility is still a thing. Take a look at clubs, for example. Always check your mix in mono to see if all your elements are still hearable. To do that in FL, simply turn the stereo separation control of the master track all the way to the right. It's that simple. Mistake number four, ignoring low end balance. Especially in hip hop and trap, the low end is a very crucial part. Make sure the kick and 808 don't overpower each other, but instead work together. Now this starts by choosing the correct sample. It's best to choose a kick with a sharp attack and a short decay. When looking for a kick, open up an EQ on the master. Make sure you find one with a prominent mid and upper range frequency presence. This will help it cut through the mix. Now for the 808, you want to choose a sample that's deep and powerful with a strong sub bass presence and a sustained tail. By choosing the right samples, you can already prevent the kick and 808 from clashing into each other. Now, of course, there's still a lot of low end in the kick and if played together with the 808, it will still sound overpowered. Now, there is a way we can fix this. We're gonna make the 808 duck every time that the kick plays. In other words, sidechaining. Select the mixer track with the kick and right click the menu on the 808 track. Then choose sidechain to this track. With the 808 track selected, open up a limiter in the effects rack. Once it's open, go to compressor. On the right side, you can select the kick because we sent it to the 808 track earlier. Now, increase the ratio all the way to the right, then increase the attack just a little bit and decrease the release. Now turn down the threshold all the way to the left. Then let the music play and slowly increase the threshold again until the kick and 808 sound natural. Also, don't forget to tweak the ratio, attack and release when this is happening. You can literally see the kick cutting through the 808 in the limiter. This technique will fix a lot of low-end issues. Mistake number five, mixing in solo mode. Don't mix every track separately. Always listen to the entire arrangement when making adjustments. In the end, this is what the listeners will hear. However, when you're leveling the mix, you can start with enabling one sound and then add another one. You can keep doing that until you have every mix or track leveled. Then simply listen again and adjust where needed. So speaking of leveling a mix, it's time to actually start mixing a beat. And you can do that by clicking the video right here where you can follow along.
Goodbye.